gamma, which I denote the set of vertices by i and the set of arrows by h. And we said that that way you can associate a generalized Pachuli algebra. So associated with the Cartoon matrix. Recently, there's a categorization of this uh, module given by Kuo 
Cloda and Kukin, the statement is that you can define a certain algebra, which is called clever hyper algebra, or a KRR algebra. Well, but I will actually work with a version of which is called cyclotomic clever hyper algebra. And then we can know this algebra by R lambda alpha. So for each uh, linear positive combination of uh, uh, positive roots, I have, a, I, I have an algebra of R lambda alpha, and I consider the category of projective modules of my and and they take some <coughs> over all the alpha. And this arrow here is given by taking the progenity group. Well, by transferring over the And then, and then on this side, you can there's a a, fin, a finalization of this module, which is called a wild module W lambda. For so this time not the algebra G, but for an finalization of it, so the current algebra G T. So, so this is what we call the current algebra. I would know it by and so what's 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 this W lambda? It's just confined as uh, you're taking the same space, but now you're taking all the all the homology in all the places. Okay. And so this this is what what is called the wild one. And also, uh, also there is a dual wild module. Where the one of your closing brackets is misplaced. Closing parentheses is misplaced. So after k, it should be before k. Oh, yeah. Okay. And also here, if you replace uh, remove homology by the homology. Well, another variety. Okay, you get what is called dual wild module. And the goal of today's talk is to, well, I want to tell you how to go from this category to this abundant part. So basically, the idea is that instead of taking the prodigy group, if you want to get uh, this wild module, you need to take the trace of this category. And if, when you dualize, so when you want to go here, you take, uh, actually you take the center of this. So this is the, this is the plan for uh, the Kazuki part. And then for the, uh, for the Heisenberg part, there's a very similar story. Where, so the, the, the row of dominant it will be replaced just by a positive integer. And, and then, uh, so here, V of R will not, will, will not be a irreducible module in general, but like R copies of, R, uh, R copies of tensor product of whole space. And then here, Nakajima also constructed an action uh, of, of the Heisenberg algebra on the space which is, uh, which is called a Gizoka space. So I will, I will give definition later, but just give an idea. If r equals to 1, then here it's a, it's a Hilbert scheme uh, of n points constituted. And also, then, <coughs> this is a very recent work of uh, Schumann and Bastro extended. Uh, so here we have the action of Heisenberg. And they extended this to an action of a W1 plus infinity algebra.
And so you have a similar you have a similar story. <coughs>
won't break the lenses. I, I, I won't write it down because I will not use it. So this deformation will depend on the quiver of the gamma at the end. So n and, and is also fixed. The integer n.
So the center in this case is just the following. So you take the polynomial ring x in x1, xn, and you tie with the, this identical I'm EU. And then you take the sum. So you have the action of the symmetry group on this variable x and, and also it adds on, on u. So you, you take the invariance of x in the same time. And it's easy to check that it's the same as the homology, the equivariant homology of a point with respect to this. And so the content of this categorization theorem 
is to say that when you consider all the so when you consider the, the direct sum for all the alpha in the class of our alpha lambda, the projected module for these algebras, then you have some action of uh, induction and restriction factors on it. So you have a natural embedding of our alpha lambda into uh, so D alpha i R alpha B, alpha i lambda. So E alpha i is just the sum of all the eigenpotents for the last coordinate is i. <coughs> and then you can do induction from R lambda first to uh, R lambda by inducing by this morning. <coughs> I denote this by an i, and then you have a, a joint functor which is e i. And you can check that uh, these operators acting on this category use an action on a group, a protein group, and they will give the action of the Schroeder generator assumption. Okay. And so, so this the categorization statement is that the k zero of this category. And also, this algebra has some other nice properties. First of all, it's a, it's a series of algebra. So 
here as I said, it's CFG to win G, and so it has ABE. Then C of G is just an envelope of this G bracket T. But uh, it can be, well, in general, it's just something formed by generator aggregation. And we, we also prove that the CG action on the trace is cyclic.
second theorem is the following, that if we assume G is a type of NEE, then we can consider two particular situations of the of the curve hyperalgebra. So the first one, I take this this k underline to be the cohomology, equivalent cohomology of the group G lambda. Okay, so yeah, I have to say that G lambda is just the product I of all the G L of lambda I. Okay, lambda is the dominant weight and lambda I is the coefficient before uh, omega I. And then this group acts on both M0 at the lambda and on, on this side, and pi is G lambda experiment. So, uh, so if I take K equals to this, so this is just the tensor product of K, let's say Y I1, Y I lambda I, And I pick my polynomial A to be AI of U is given by the product for P equals to 1 lambda I is U minus YI. And I consider the corresponding uh, quiver hyperalgebra R lambda alpha. Then it's traced. isomorphic to the wild volume. So in other words, it's the same as the Boromo homology of L of plus alpha lambda. Yes, no, but here I need to take the equivalent Boromo homology with respect to the They are isomorphic as The CG module structure on the right hand side has been constructed by the hand. And if you take the center, here you will just get the cohomology of the same variety. But since this, this variety is actually homotopic to an atomic. So this is again a C2 module. And you realize that these two modules are dual to each other. And the duality on this side is given by the symmetry form with the form. And the duality on this side is, is kind of a, a compact duality.
a hydrogrub situation, we use the degenerate of one hydrogrub instead of the quiver hydrogrub. So uh, our again, you know, this Rn could just be a uh, degenerate of one hydrogrub.
homology. Actually, that that is given. So that will give you 
something like if I enter T to the power of R. So the, the first theorem you can see it seems like they run the other one. <laughs> it was, uh, so we use magnetic field varieties that doesn't depend on the orientation of the field. So uh, that's enough for the best orientation of the field. Uh, yeah, no, it's a unique. No, no, I actually want to fix the orientation of the pillar to define the. So I define the KR, but I already fixed the orientation of the field. The definition of KR depends on the but orientation. But in the first case, I think so. Yeah, I think you fix the pillar with the orientation, and then you, on one side you take the corresponding KR as the pillar hyperlink, and on the other side you take the corresponding Which doesn't depend on the Yeah, but let's say, uh, yes, but KR and are isomorphism to change the orientation. Uh -huh. So yeah, the same thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> Father. 